So we are in, and I just realized we got the wrong thing up. Poggle, Surf Slays Blue. Poggle, Chocolate Paladins Blue. Luckily, Blame Elias was the last match I covered, so we don't even have to change Blame Elias. Right. Chocolate Paladins. Six short swords. Interesting. A Polax, a Spear, Musket, Shortbow, Jewel Blade, and Four Pike. Good Blame Elias, two moles. Long sword, three short swords, five, no, six polaxes. That's pretty good. Three pike. Looking at their names, a couple of new names in as well. Dog Cray, Dog Vio. I don't remember seeing him that often in their team. Vio. There's definitely a few names that we have seen though. Ugarai did a massive charge last battle. Pretty sure with Cataphracts, he come from behind and absolutely wrecked faces on the B point. Bravo, Tok, and Soul as well. Our oh, Mr. Tok are always very good players. Lama the Cray. Fallen Ronin. Right, Big Mac as well. Big Mac minus one. He was like one of the first matches did loads of work, man. Blame Elias. Gonna be a good matchup, man. Blood Story is a good player as well. Who? Blood Story. Blood Story. Ah, yeah, yeah. Polax. We got a couple of uh, cavalry out. Blame Elias. They got Zakali Militia as well. I'm pretty sure Shagging Wagon, though, for Chocolate Paladins did work last time. I could... Unless it's just because I liked his name so much, it stayed in my head. Yeah, but I definitely, I, <laughs> best name in all of Conqueror's Blade. Maximus Meridius, how you doing, bud? Hoglate Ch Chadadin. <laughs> no, didn't, didn't I, no I, as, as much as I do like Shagging Wagon, I didn't. Vasectomy, for me, was still the one that stood out. V vasectomy, yeah, yeah. Vasectomy is a uh, Rose, weren't he? Or was he Eden? I can't remember now. Not sure, yeah. but that was a, that was a good one. I'm pretty sure he's the uh, team leader of his team as well. I think it, I have a Rose or Eden. Oh, wow, I've never zoomed out before on Harbour City. Have you seen that back line, that line back there? Yeah. That looks kind of terrible. Have you seen it? It's like a black well, hole. It, it's, only a, it's only a rotated on squared map, isn't it? If you actually see the, lo the layout um, when Harbour City this is looks not terrible. actually their different map, like they've just basically... Like literally you just go off the edge of the world and it's death look. <laughs> and <then> you... <laughs> look at that. Nice, and it's just like, wow, wow, wow. Everyone's like, that's, why is he looking at that and not at the game? That's season 15 <laughs> for when the population's not high enough, they just bring in a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> the, the blackness just takes over the map. you got like, fucking, yeah. it's not 10 minutes to take it anymore. It's like a battle royale. The blackness just comes in, and if you get into the black, you just fall through the map and die. Yeah, it's a wave. It's that's... a hold wave. Yeah, I'd say that's fair. Right, so there's a little bit of pressure going on the side gate. Aranor's there alone. Who is Aranor got? Aranor looks like he's got some sort of pikey unit. He has Fortabrachio. In, like, people sleep on this man. Widespread Fortabrachios. So they can't do as much, I was going to say, with the short sword. And he, because it's in a small gap, he managed to just absolutely ruin them anyway. Yeah, the mud I wrecked that. That was only one unit as well. Aran, Ar Aranor's probably going to die. Although, they've got heroes pushing this way. Yeah, they've, they've got that covered. A couple of Iron Reapers come and they do have cavalry in the back here. Didn't actually look if they have Keshigs. They probably don't, though. Looks like two sets of Cataphracts there straight off of that. Cataphracts is the uh, Ugarai just killed the decent kick. cav at the moment. Liao's, yeah. Although Liao's got a buff, they're still still ship. I mean, we still do have a, do have a couple of units of Keshigs out, but they're not, they're not going to be doing the work like they were doing last week. No, you just got to catch heroes out. That is what yeah. cash eggs are for now. And they get in the towers in. Obviously, there's not enough real little, like, defense artillery. I don't even think they're going to defend, eh? Look, they've just got heroes up there to make it look like it is, but they're not actually going to Nah, the gate's not down yet, though, which is interesting. You haven't even moved anything for the gate yet. I'm surprised they didn't try Cheeky Falconetti to just get they rid can't. of the tower. Falconetti and Shenzhen's a, a band. Oh, okay. I didn't see Back that. Start. In the I went. Through, well, I went through it before, but uh, they're quite. Yeah. So Aranor's behind Bravo. Oh no, it's just Aranor and Bravo just basically being cheeky little cheeky little dudes down here. They pulled back through. Though we got Modal and oh, two sets of Modal. Oh no, and Modal and Reaper. Yeah, they're not going to get through there that quick. Obviously, they're giving up A, so that's easy. Fluffy rabbits just bombing the crap out of the formations down here. 
How many muskets did both teams have? One, no. Two. Three muskets for the attackers. None for the defenders. defenders. Okay, interesting. Looks like they're not really putting that much on the supply side. They're going to try and like defend the courtyard. So like when they come down the stairs, basically, the gate's well, closed. It was so one can't of the things we've, you know, it's one of the things that's heavily talked about. That courtyard is a good place to defend. It's not trebable, basically. Yeah. And, and then you've got only... three, three entrances, basically, down into the courtyard that you can hit from every direction. And if they push with range, if you can absorb their fire range, their res if they're on the stairs, their resupply is miles away. So... I mean, if you're effective like, time wasting. Apart from obviously the heroes, the attackers have no range. The defenders have got two sets of Zakalian, or what? Well, one set now because Lazy and Parata just got killed. But um, this is looks like it's going to be fairly easy counterable, counterable by Elias if they push down or when they push down the stairs. They got jobs there as well. Is that job sergeant. Yeah, that's cool. Although they've moved a lot of their units back, so. Why are they just going in with the heroes, but no units? There's no real special units here to kill it. They're like... Is this just so they can save their units? Because... Well, they got that support. I mean, enough of them got through, didn't they? I suppose it worked. Like, I, I was just looking at it like, why, why have they got no heroes? <laughs> They've just lost a lot, though. More and more calf for Blame Elise coming in to clear up on the supply point. Yeah, this, I suppose they've lost is, no but... heroes doing that, but they've just lost a lot of their... No, they're not losing heroes. So... Oh, Casper. They're not using units. There we go. But they lost a lot of heroes just. They're down to three. Uh, a couple here are going to get get pushed as well. The gate but controls that... are up on top. They've already opened them. That works out for Blame Elise because if they actually get pushed back to home point and they start getting heroes, then... That respawn time yeah. is going to be everything. Yeah. That's kicking in, yeah. I mean, they've got 11 minutes now. Everything's just open, uh, spawned on the back gate, though, look. That maybe just so they could rotate quickly? Maybe. they got palace guards. They've got iron reapers there. They did have modal. They've got an IPG that's going to walk straight into them now. That is a lot of cab as well. That one IPG is going to do so much work there. They've got Zakalians thrown in as well. That's going to stop a lot. Looks like a lot of the heroes weren't actually able to do something there. I mean, Chocolate Paladins have definitely gotten through there, but Blame Elise are able to rotate, and they're they're doing work, man. Unit-wise, they've killed maybe 50, 60 more. Lamb of the Cray from another direction with his cataphracts, I think that is. Problem is with this push, you're, yeah, you've pushed the side of the spawn of, of Blame Elias, so for their first life, they're going to spawn in quickly. Yeah, exactly. Blame Elise have stopped, like, they've won at the, the side gate, if you like. Again, um, ooh, Jason West, though, he's going to start getting cat points off. This is going to see how, we're going to see Blame Elise panic here. Blood Story's going to have to go straight through to endpoint. Have they seen it, though? Have, have they not seen it? Now Bravo's going, there he goes. But he's not got a unit, has he? He's got Palace Guards, so his unit's going to be too slow. Mr. Tox get in there as well. So they're going to be able to get rid of Jason, or they're going to stop him from thinging. They're going to clear up on the supply as well. Obviously, the back supply in the background there has been able to get taken by uh, Chocolate Paladin. Chocolate Paladins have lost a lot of units there, though. 360 down, so nearly nearly 100 behind now. Fanatics try to disengage. Been covered by Rolls Cavalry, I believe. Or is that Fanatics Cavalry? I know that was uh, Blame Elias Cavalry that went past him there. They've only used two trebs so far as well. Jason West's still going strong. <laughs> as he says it, he does. Ah. Right, now, now I think we're going to get to a more traditional set up an end point and then Chocolate Paladin's going to be able to start putting pressure on. But the engagements so far have definitely gone Flame Elias' way. The yeah, 400 units lost are 300. I'd actually part, push pipe to the home point, past the home point, and round the corner there. You man, like into this area, right? I honestly yeah, think this path, area is good, yeah. Path. Yeah, because it's un it's literally near enough untreppable. Yeah. And if you've got if they've got no falcos or senjis, we have to hold there. Yeah. 
I mean, they got stiffer off for noise. So if they were completely blobbed up, they'd be uh, should be able to do work on them. Uh, Chocolate Paladins. They do have a Flames in the match. To set oh no, Jason West have spawned with Flames. Okay. They are going to have Flames for this push. They've got eight minutes. So they, don't need to, they don't need to rush. Blame Elisa basically got everything at the back now, though. They've got mainly infantry as well. They've got Ugarai with his cav in the back. He's he's already shown he's pretty good with the, his cav timing as well. He's got Cataphract Bloodstorm. He's got Keshig's out. They've got Zakalian up. They've got Tercios. They don't have flames. They don't even have flames out. Oh yeah, they do. Lazy Imperator's got flames. But it was a good it was a good strat by Chocolates to force Flames back like this. But I think it just cost them a little bit too much. Yeah, they've. I mean, they've got. Enough units probably for maybe two pushes. Obviously, this one they've got a full set of really good units out. Dragon Wagon's got its fucking alchemist out though. Um, time wise, they'd probably have enough for maybe three pushes, but because unit wise, they're probably going to be able to get two decent pushes off. That Treb could be very good. I think they've seen it though. Yeah, they've seen it. His Blood Story with his Keshig's looking for a, a completely new angle. This is a problem for Chocolate here because Blame Elias are just completely outnumbering the push here, so they can just go in and wipe what's there. Yeah, Chocolate have got the supply, but they're going to lose so much here in like an easy engagement for Elias because they just completely outnumber them. But it doesn't matter if you haven't got the number troops. Yeah, but like if, if Paladins would have been able to get more stuff to rotate there, so, so it was like a Zerg on Zerg. Like now it's yeah. Blame Elias have got the numbers and they've got the angles to hit their, their setup from every direction. Obviously they can tread places here, but they're gonna they're gonna struggle, I think, with that fight. Blame Elisa down a couple of heroes now as well though, so it's not like completely one sided. They're completely stopped on this resupply though. Nearly half the units though, this is I think they're trying to use the supply for trips. I think they're just trying to draw them in. They're trying to try to bait it, yeah. There's the Kalian militia throws though. If they can keep that up because they're on supply, they're going to start doing work, man. That Treb could be pretty goddamn good as well. This... Oh, no. Lucky. Lucky from Blame Elias. I think it was Bravo who fought Brachio and basically completely dodged all of the Trebs. Absolute mosh pit on the supply, innit? Yeah, it's a good old bro. Chocolate Paladins have got more heroes up at the minute. The points? Oh no, there's two. One of each team over there, so they can't get that. Could be an awesome treb, though. Yeah. Very good treb. Rocket Paladins just lost another wedge of heroes, though. Another wedge of units as well. They've got people rotating around without units to the end point to just try and get rid of the dudes over here so they can take it. But, it's a four, um, 400 point. It's 400 troop difference, mate. Oh, yeah, it is. Trebs can't pull that, mate. Right. Nah. Not in a minute. It is. This has happened a few times in the league though, where like you see you see the attackers do a strat which on paper looks really good, but it like it spreads their team out too much. And the defenders mm -hmm. can basically counter-attack with more numbers. Each each engagement they always have, they always have the number advantage. And they can just roll over stuff really easily. And I think that is why Blame Elias has got so many units still, because every engagement they've basically taken, they've always made sure they've pretty much had the advantage. Like yeah. troop unit wise and hero wise, and they've just been able to. It's a good have uh, easier uh, fights each time. Chocolate Paladin strat is a good strat for sieges and ranked because you're not working as a fifteen man. But yeah, it's, it can be like it's what do they, I think I'm pretty sure they call it defeat in detail or something. And you like take little a fight, but where you outnumber the enemy, like if they they outnumber you, and that's basically what what Blame Elias just did. They. The well, fights they took, they yeah. outnumbered the the Chocolate Paladins. Chocolate Paladins had like, say, the majority on the this supply over here, what we're looking at now. But like, and they had a littler amount here or a smaller unit count. And Blame Elias just outnumbered these, nuked them, and then could move in, and then then they had more numbers on this lot as well. But that, that's what this is exactly what I was like saying, mate. It, the, the strap was good, but. Blameless moved as as a herd, so when yeah. ever they come into combat, there was always twelve on five. And yeah, as skilled as you are, you just can't deal with 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 herd like that. Now that's why the Zerg is strong. <laughs> yeah, was it? 
apes together strong or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. Yeah, like and that was, if, that if, especially if you've got Falcos and Sendis uh, banned, banned, then yeah. you you want to move as one. Yeah. So that flames like in the right position would have been able to do work though. Like this is, you know, three minutes of basically blame Elias just hunting and murdering everything that moves. <laughs> Let's have a quick look at. Uh, I'm obviously hero deaths now. They've been pushed out and they're just gonna die more and more and more. But basically, the whole team's died three times. So when they were getting involved in fights, everyone was getting involved. Um, um, who's got the most? You know, Ugarai. It which... was a good little strat. Ooh. I liked that, but it just cost so much. Yeah. Oh, you mean when they when they all pushed just the heroes onto the supply, died, yeah, respawned then, at the back, and then went through with full cav and got wiped yeah. by like. That, it yeah. was a good good like uh, as you're looking at it as a quick rotation, very very good. But they just obviously lost that fight, and that was the turning yeah. tide there. I reckon if they'd have done that push and had less cavalry and actually had like palace guards, uh, iron reapers, and just maybe the Madao of their own to stop the, the Blame Elias counter charges, I reckon they would have got through that a lot easier. Because yeah. that one IPG uh, that c that came in at the side, um, he was like one, he was like the third unit to turn up to the fight that supported. And he like charged them in and then just like started marching. And then they had like the Kaylee militia thrown in as well. And I think that was kind of stunning the heroes. The heroes couldn't like belly flop the IPGs out of the way. Like they did work. Man. They did absolute work, those IPGs there. And I reckon if they'd have had like their palace guard, you've got the the, the squat that they do. So they're immune, immune to CC, they would have absolutely nuked that IPG straight off the bat. Uh the Zakalian probably wouldn't have done much to them as well it, it, when they had the two ability up. So they maybe should have had more of like a, a mixed arms push there instead of just like 99% cav. GG. That was a rough fight. Um, obviously, Blame Elias is going to be attacking next, and Chocolate Paladin is going to be defending. So we're going to see if they do it similarly. I can't imagine anybody actually defending A, though. Like, in any of the fights, it's too wide open. I'd be surprised if anyone actually defends the A. And I don't think... I think Falcon is going to get banned in every single match we see on this map as well. Oh, Just yeah. Just so you can't stop the towers. Of mean sea. Ugarai, man. 10 heroes and 18 assists. Or 11 heroes and 19 assists and 160. <laughs> that is What did he have for units? Obviously, it's just showing cataphracts and pike militia because his other unit was dead, but I think he had two sets of cab out. He did really well on the last battle as well, though, that I saw. Like, uh, you watched that as well, didn't you? The B, the B uh, back charge he did when they were defending. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Ugarai is awesome for his cav map. So shout out to Ugarai, here he is. I don't like his attire, though. It looks shit. Get, get a new one, Ugarai, for next time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, I was, if I was Chocolate Paladins now, I'd just spawn in and treb him. Just to, like, get a few units killed, saying, oh, yeah, you know, look, look at me. 40, yeah. 40, 50 unit killed. <laughs> Do you reckon that's what Colt 45 is going to do? Or is he just going to run? I'd run if I were him. Oh, they got flames in there as well. There he goes. The, the dance begins. Literally, imagine if there was like in game comms, he'd literally be running around going, bah, 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 bah. You're never going to touch this. Never going to touch this. <laughs> <laughs> That's far right, yeah. Oh, you're never gonna get this. You're never gonna get this. Oh man. With his uncle or something, with his sister or some shit. <laughs> My sister, <laughs> she number three bus dude. <laughs> Chocolate Paladins tried to copy our strat we used against them in scrims. Shame we did it against Elias too. <laughs> That's actually hilarious. Right, so Chocolate Paladins MVP on on on, on Nomi. 0, 4, 9, 97 unit kills. Good support amount of support points. 100% 100, 100 participation. Obviously, resupplies, capping A, and the rest of it. Um, Ugarai didn't. What? 21 assists for Lazy Imperator. Holy hell, man. 5 units, 21 assists, and 120 units. GG, that man. Again, another shout out to Ugarai for his cavalry skill, let's say. And just generally, the whole Blame Elias team, rotations were quick, they were sharp. Enjoyed watching that. Was good. 
Toggle Chocolate Paladins Blue. 